here today to talk about the 17 to 55 Nikon F28 DX lens. And I saw this lens in the camera shop on my way home one day and I thought I'll do a little research on that. It's got a gold ring. It's 400 pounds, which was a little bit expensive for a DX lens. So I thought I'd find out whether it was worth trying to use it on a full frame camera, in this case, the D810. What I found out from digging a little bit was that this is a pro lens that was way overpriced when it first came out at over a thousand dollars pounds and second hand still sells for four to six hundred pounds now because it's a pro lens I'll be using it on a full frame camera the D810 research brought up the fact that it can be used on a full frame camera not just a DX but that you have to either ignore the wide end completely or use it in DX mode. DX mode isn't exactly ideal. Why buy a full frame camera if you're not going to use it as a full frame camera? Just buy a much cheaper DX camera. So I went out, I got the lens. The first thing I noticed about the lens was that it is definitely a pro lens. It's built like a brick. This one has had a few dinks. It's been well used and it still works absolutely fine. There's no sign of it's slowing down it's just a little wear and tear on the outside of the lens like all pro lenses they are built to last so if you can pick one up second hand you should be quite happy that it's not gonna be affected by you know a few drops that many plastic cheaper lenses will suffer from and here's a few shots from around London The question of whether it can be used on a full frame camera, the answer is yes, absolutely. So there is some serious vignetting up to about 30mm on the lens, but with a full frame camera you're going to be looking, your minimum is going to be 24 megapixels unless you've got an older 12 megapixels. You won't, you can afford to lose some. Cropping is not that big of an issue. Of course you can always use the vignettes in your images stylize them slightly or you can use Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you're using to do your post to actually eliminate the vignette not a problem here's a selection of images that go through the marked focal lengths on the lens barrel so we have 17 20 24 28 35 45 and 55 mil it is a pretty dark scene I didn't want to shoot a white wall because you're not going to be using it to shoot white walls I wouldn't have thought and if you are easily easy easy to get rid of that in post this is a real life scene that as a lifestyle photographer you may be shooting on a regular basis and vignetting really isn't an issue here for these images the lens is perfectly usable from 35 mil and still usable below but maybe not 100% of the time when it comes to video, it's a completely different story. Because the 16.9 frame is a different shape to the 5.4 frame that stills use, the image is already cropped in camera. So you're chopping off the top and the bottom, which means that a lot of the vignetting is gone anyway. So for video, is another example. Zooming through, again, the increments are 17, 20, 24, 28, 35, 45, and 55 mil. As you can see, the vignetting is gone by about 24 mil, which makes this a much more usable 24 to 55 mil range for video. So certainly in a video sense, the competitors for this lens will be something like the 24 to 70, the 28 to 70, or a much cheaper kit lens which won't resolve in the same way that this does. And obviously there's also lenses like the 28-300 or the 28-200, but on those lenses you don't get the fast aperture of 2.8 that this lens offers you. So for that shallow depth of field, glorious filmic look, this lens is a very good option. This lens is more flexible than a prime lens. 
prime lens is probably let's say generally 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 if you're going expensive with Canon. But 2.8 is a great aperture to go with. It lets you shoot in low light. And this lens is also flexible for video. If you're looking at 24 to 55, you've got very usable range. You're not stuck having to change lenses on a 24 or 28 and a 35 and a 50, depending on where you are. So if you're shooting on a tight schedule and tight budget, great lens. You've got a 28, a 35 and a 50 all in your bag at the same time. And back to stills, this is a pro lens. His shot 50 mil simple one light setup but you can see the resolving power of this lens you're not going to get that generally with a cheap plastic DX lens and this was the way this lens shines as the resolving power of primes but in a much more affordable mid-range zoom there are of course downsides and if you are going to use the lens on a full frame camera you do need to realize or you do have to be mindful not to go too wide or although it's not an issue really you can always crop it in post-processing it is extra work after your shoot but other than that it is perfectly usable for a full frame camera and obviously it's perfect for a DX camera as well where at a 1.5 times crop factor you're looking at a this is a very good affordable lens for full frame and DX on uh, video and for stills. So for more non-reviews, blogs, portfolios, anything else you want, any questions you have, just visit cuttingshutter.com. I'm Ben Pete, you've been you, goodbye.